So making the mozzarella, or fior di latte in this case, requires us to curdle the milk, separate the fat and protein, and now we, what we do is we extrude that water, left with the, what we call in Italian cagliata, or curd. Curds and whey. Whey is the water, curds is the solid, the fat and protein. First you curdle the milk, and then you recook those curds. And we call a cotture, a prima cotture, first cooking of the curds. And that's what we're going to attempt here. The right temperature for the water needs to be about 180 degrees so to allow the curds to become more pliable, to work, and to knead it until it gets to the right texture so we can give you a nice, mm -hmm. tender, sweet, tasting, fresh fior de latte. Are you, you going to show us how to make curds? Well, I tell you, I'm not going to show you today. That, that would be not too difficult. In fact, is all it requires is curdling the milk by heating the milk to a temperature approximately 100 degrees, body temperature. Remember, we're mimicking nature now. And adding an enzyme. The enzyme is called renin. And that enzyme, we use e either a microbial or we use a vegetable uh, enzyme. But in our stomach, we secrete that enzyme, especially when we're children, child, young infants. And that's what makes this reaction take place, the separation of the fat and the protein. And in, ma in the production of making fresh mozzarella, we would take that curd, separate it, and then drain as much whey as possible, and then recook it. Anyway, Rene, just hold up some of the curd for now. We cut up some curd. This was a, a block of curd. All it is is milk, solid form of milk, fat and protein of the milk. And in a regular mixing bowl, now we make it all by hand. In making the pasta filata, the first thing you would do is you would be cutting the curd. Now we would add hot water. Now this is the truth in making any of these type of cheeses. That includes provolone. You see those big, big forms of cheese hanging in, in many of the Italian markets? Well, it's made exactly the same way. The, we might add an additional enzyme when we're making um, provolone to give it a, a, a sharp characteristic. Sometimes we'll add the rennet of a, of a baby goat. This is, again, it's vegetable rennet or, or microbial rennet that we use. Now, as you'll see, coming together, little by little, how's the water, Renee? Is it hot enough? Okay. Now that water was hot. Uh, you you, it you could just put your hand in it? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what we do is usually, this is called what we call the first water, and that neutralizes the temperature of the, of the curd. And now he's going to recycle a little bit of the water, which sometimes adds a little acidity to it and sometimes makes it a little more tender. So for instance, in the middle of the winter, when uh, we're having a little bit of trouble getting the right kind of stretch with the curd, we will actually recycle some of this water here into the, into the hot pot, as you might say, to create a little more acidity to give a little more tenderness to the, uh, to the product. You could do it at home. And I never discourage people from trying to make this at home. It's, first of all, it's fun. It's, all right, it's a little hot on the fingers, but you get, to, you get used to it. Now you can see how the, how the curds are coming back together and it's becoming more elastic. It's looking like mozzarella. It's starting to look, yeah. it, it gets to the texture of almost taffy. And Renee, if you can stretch a little bit as it comes together, stretch a little bit up. So you could see that it becomes very, very stretchy. Okay. Now you would work this until you get all the lumps of the curds and everything is uniformed and everything like that. Okay. Start. Renee is going to start making some, some mozzarella. So, d depending on what cheese you want to make, you would have a different temperature of the milk. Regatta, you would have the temperature of of the milk to 180 degrees. In this case, you would have the temperature of 100 degrees. All right, and by the way, pasta filata you could make into any shape or size you want. 
we make what we call a scamorza. When they make a scamorza, he's going to show you. With, and, and, and this is the precursor to the cacio cavallo. Cacio means cheese, cavallo means horse. And what we would do is we would take two of these, tie a string around it as it aged, and then hang it over a wooden sawhorse, you know, a carpenter's horse, and then it became known as the cheese from the horse. In Italian, we would say cacio cavallo. Now, what are your favorite ways to use first mozzarella? Uh, of course, it's often used on pizza, but do you just eat it raw, or do you like Fresh, to cut it with basil and, and tomatoes? Well, that's the traditional caprese. And, you know, caprese, uh, pizza margarita, okay, that represents something very important to the, to the Italians. It's the color of the Italian flag, uh, green, white, red. And, and uh, in the case of the caprese, which is Capri, okay, the first king and queen of Italy was from Naples and Capri. They have this caprese. Is fresh mozzarella, which is white, okay. Pomodoro, grown on the on Mount Vesuvius, v that volcanic, uh, dormant volcanic soil, and basilico, basil, is the colors of the Italian, uh, the Italian flag. But that's a great way to eat mozzarella. It but the what a connection, it's, combination. It's, it's great. But for me, the best way to eat it is to take a mozzarella and eat it like an apple. <laughs> that's what you want. And what we do with fresh mozzarella is we do enhance the flavor. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to let you in on a secret. This is our secret ingredient and when, we make, when we make mozzarella. All right? Renee, shall we show them the secret ingredient? Uh -huh. Okay. If there are any well, mozzarella makers here, this The secret ingredient see. for the taste of Di Paolo's mozzarella is this right here. I spent a lot of time, a lot of effort and money to find the best sale marino to enhance the flavor. And sea salt, sea salt is a pure salt from, we get it from Trapani, Sicily. I took a lot of time to go and really find the best salina, the cleanest, the purest, the one that I felt would give me the true essence of, of, of salt to enhance the flavor of the mozzarella. So what we would do is we would take the sea salt, put it in water, and make what in Italian we say salamoia, or in English, a brine. And that's all it is, is salt water. Whole milk, just enhanced with a little bit of salt water. And you've got to have enough salt. Renee, I think you've got to stir this around a little bit. Then when we put a mozzarella in there, what happens? I'll put one mozzarella in there and see if, if we have enough salt in there. All right. How yeah. long do you leave it in? It should float like ivory soap, <laughs> okay? But it's not, it doesn't taste like ivory soap, believe me. <laughs> we don't like to salt it too long because we really want you to taste the freshness and sweetness of the milk. But we do want to enhance the, the outside of it, and we'll leave it in for about five minutes. Thank you, Lou. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs>